Okay, so for this one, <laughs> we'll let Daniel nerd out just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. So we've had a lot of people asking in the Whiskey Tribe, um, how do I best smell and taste whiskey? Because especially in the beginning, people often just get like very generic. It smells like whiskey. It smells like burning. Yeah, it's like picking up wine and being like, it smells grapey. Tastes, tastes like campfire. Yeah. <laughs> kind of sweet. Uh, but if somebody is wanting to get into whiskey and they really want to be able to start picking apart the nuances and the complexity that right. whiskey can offer, um, I wanted you to explain how best to do that. And I wanted to do that through a little bit of a challenge. Okay. And the challenge is? The challenge is a blind taste test. Okay. That's what this is all set up here for? This is a blind taste test. So, okay. we just uh, earlier today shot a video with 10 different bourbons. What I wanted to do, this is about four hours ago, we're off the heels of these bourbons. We've had a lunch since then. I wanted to say 10 bottles of bourbon based on memory of those bourbons. Are you up nah. to the challenge? Nah, I guess I'm, it's gonna be harder than that. <laughs> okay, I really can't. I'm expecting you to get 20% uh, wrong. 20% wrong, 20, I, I would guess more. 20% um, wrong. I will tell you that uh, blind tasting with wine is, uh, in my experience, a little bit easier up to a certain point. Now, getting it down to vintage and vineyard, but at least getting the grape, it's so much easier. Whiskey, the bandwidth is so much more narrow, and right. so it's don't funny. be afraid if you are only feel like you're getting sort of a few things every time you smell whiskey. That's okay, so, so right. uh, here's what I'll tell you. Even as a psalm, uh, normally you'll have these in your head, I'm gonna keep it in front of me so that I can keep them in front of mind while I'm looking at things. Uh, what do you have? When you smell things, yeah. um, if you haven't already built up the pattern for that thing, your brain's not gonna recognize it. Because what happens when you smell is you're asking your brain, what pattern does this match? Yeah. If you haven't already built the pattern, there's nothing for it to match. And so imagine if you had never had curry Right, yeah. Ever. Yeah. Right? And someone says, does this smell like curry to you? <laughs> Your reaction is going to be like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. And they're going to be like, oh, I get all kinds. Is this a Thai curry or is it an Indian curry? And it's going to be like, oh, if you know curry, right, you can pick it out like that. Yeah. If you've never had curry, you, you have no idea what, your, your brain has no context. One way to teach your yeah, brain I'm, something. I'm done learning. <laughs> is to go through a list of possible tastes and smells that tend to show up in a bourbon, and instead of trying to blindly guess it, look at something and say, brain, are you finding this, yes or no? Mm -hmm. And then you can go, no, maybe, or, and then you narrow down a flavor profile. And then you go back and look at the things that were left over, and you, you do the reverse, you try to confirm it. Show me so something. now I said, okay, so like this first whiskey, right? Okay, so this is definitely a wine finished one. So of these, I've got only th two or three that have no wine finish. Right. So I know that I've got Stag has no wine finish, The Makers has no wine finish, and The Ocean has no wine finish. Mm -hmm. So immediately I know I'm one of the other seven. Mm -hmm. And I know that because the end of this has these dark fruit notes that don't show up in bourbon normally. Now, if I was doing this backwards, what I would say is I go through my list, and this is from the Whiskey Smiths, by the way. Okay. Um, I would go through my list, and I'd say something like, oh, you can also use Charles McLean's flavor wheel. Um, barrel notes, new oak, used oak. Definitely new oak in the front part of the nose, but the back end finish is, is the wine oak. So it's both, right? Mm -hmm. So immediately I know it's a finished whiskey. I can go down to grains. Well, these are all gonna be dominantly corn. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna help me much. Right. So I'm gonna skip grains. I'm gonna go to fruit notes. Now, if I'm getting dark fruit notes, odds are I've got a sherry finished cask of some kind. Mm -hmm. Or a wine finished, a dark wine finished cask, right? Right. This has a wine finish, but it's not overly dark, so I wouldn't put this in dessert wine category. Right. In the nose, right? So I would say these things have like a slight berry note, but maybe not a grape note. Still a hint of cherry. Still a little bit of banana. Uh, Madeira is too dark. Port is too sweet. Uh, Laws had no, oh, Laws had no wine finish. This had chocolate and this had three sherries. So this is a lighter wine finish okay. and the Groth is a cab. So I'm gonna say that this is probably the Jefferson Reserve Groth. All right, so this was number- One. Number one. 
And number one, Jefferson's Grub. Ah, nailed that one. So, I'm gonna move to two. I'm gonna guess that that's Angel's Envy, just right off the bat. Because I actually know that one pretty well. What number? Mm -hmm. Uh, two. Uh, now, what I was finding in there is the sweet notes of the corn. It's a little more oaky, so it's a little older, and the Angel's Envy is at least six. Mm -hmm. And um, the dark sherry notes are all super grapey. Right. And you can tell port, right? Port, right. ruby port, that's so fruity. Right. Um, three. So as you're smelling that, what I hear you saying is, one, it's just figuring out what whiskey flavors exist. Exist. Start with the reference point so you understand kind of the breadth and depth of what's possible in whiskey. Once you have that familiarity, start picking apart hints of flavor, specific notes that you're getting, and then trying to determine for you what notes does that whiskey have. I'm conflicted all of a sudden. I was pretty sure number three was Magnus. Is three Magnus? <laughs> I think that uh, I think that four is Laws. Did I get that one right? Come on, I got it right, right? There's no, okay, so here's how I knew that. I just stumbled onto one that has no wine finish. And I, there's only a few options, right? So it helps that all the bottles are in front of me. If I could not have done this at all, if I didn't have these bottles in front of me. Mm -hmm. I could never have picked these just off the shelf. out of the vault. We have That would have been 100% impossible. The what, for six me. or 700 whiskeys? Yeah, time. there's no way. No <laughs> way. It, it, if I can narrow it down by using what I know about each of these bottles, mm -hmm. it's so much easier. Now, the reason I picked Magnus on this one mm -hmm. is because it has that slight new sour note in there that I always recognize with the Magnus stuff, mm -hmm. but it's not in the taste. Mm -hmm. And I remember Magnus it remembers three kinds of uh, finish barrels, right. and Magnus is all tobacco. To me, it tastes like pipe tobacco. Well, so five, I'm moving to five. You're having too much fun. This is so much fun for me. This is when nerds really enjoy themselves. I'm just drinking whiskey now. Ah, oh, well that was easy. Um, there's only one high proof whiskey in this mix, <laughs> and I just drank it. <coughs> Number five is stag. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you realize how this gets easier and easier as I knock things out. Right, so now all that's left for me is Maker's 46, Ocean, Chocolate, uh, Pritchard's Chocolate, um, and Bell Mead Madeira. And Wyoming is pretty easy because we know that one pretty well. I think this might be the Maker's 46 because I'm not getting any fancy finish. It just smells like bourbon. And the taste is cherry. Is that Maker's a six, Maker's 46? No. I got it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I thought that was 46. Oh. Okay, so. Things just got interesting. I know. So, <laughs> wait, wait, I need to set that one aside. Okay, now that I know that, that helps me. So, I, what I remember Maker's 46 as being really cherry helps me too. Like, is that the Madeira? There's no way that's the Madeira. It's so cherry, and I don't remember the Madeira being cherry. That's the ocean, I think. Seven is ocean. Seven is ocean. Okay. So, because there's no finish to that one. So that's right. So 46 was wrong, and it's not the Pritchards. And I already pulled the stag. What's left? So the, is it really the Bell Mead? That's the Madeira? God damn it. Okay, I, that was lost on me. Okay, so I'm moving on to eight. So far, I've got all these right. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. That's easy. Ooh! <coughs> That's funky. And, oh, the last two are both funky. Crap! <laughs> okay, I know which one that one is. That's Wyoming, nine? Nine is Wyoming. Okay, so that makes eight makers. Eight makers. And that makes 10 Pritchard's chocolate. So one of uh, one out of these 10, three, four loop, the Bell Mead Madeira cast. Now here are a few tricks you can do at home. Yeah. I do this regularly. This is the only reason I'm good at this. You can't, people tend to think weird things about food. They think the same things about writing. We teach this at the school. You don't go to a tennis court for the first time in your life, swing at the tennis ball, miss it, and go, I guess I'm not a tennis player. <laughs> no, you practice, right? And you can't expect to get good at something 
if you're not practicing it. Right. You can't just be like, well, I couldn't tell that this whiskey had five things in it. Guess I'm not a taster. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. You have to work at this shit hard and all the time and annoy all of your friends. All right, so we did a blind taste test walking you through um, what you need to do to get the experience to have the reference points needed. Yes. What if you don't have access to a tremendous assortment of different whiskeys to build those reference points? Are there other things? Go to bars. <laughs> Order whiskey. All right, yeah. And don't be afraid to look like the doofus who's taking notes at the bar. Do use your phone. Use your phone. Right. Because no one thinks it's weird to be on your phone. Get your phone out. Get the notepad app out. <laughs> and uh, actually, one of the things, if at the bar it's possible to get a whiskey glass. A real one. A real one. And we a actually, flight. We did an episode about this. We'll link it up here. The yeah. best kind of glasses for drinking whiskey. A flight, you said. A flight of whiskey would be Yeah, nice. find out. Now, find a bar where they know you. Or, or go enough that they know you. Yeah. And then once that they recognize you, are like, hey, man, that's when you start saying things like, hey, instead of pouring me a full pour of one of these whiskeys, would you be willing to pour me like a half ounce of three? Yeah. Download the tasting sheet from the whiskey smiths right. or somewhere. Right. Go to the grocery store. Go to the bulk herb section. Right. Buy bulk herbs of all of the things you traditionally find in a whiskey. Uh... Right? Okay. Vanillas, cardamom, cinnamon, right. oranges. Buy all the stuff at the grocery store that you see on a tasting list. Right. And start teaching your nose to recognize those smells individually. The, the last thing you can do, apparently you have some type of smelling kit. Yeah, it's called the Aroma Academy it sells these smelling kits. Okay. This Not cheap. Two to three hundred dollars. But this is convenient. It's convenient. Okay. They've got a bourbon one and a scotch one. Okay. And they have all of these. It, it was uh, designed by a famous Scottish whiskey guy and a famous master of perfumery. So they actually, each one of these little vials right. contains an essence of that smell. For example, this is, just for you, Rex, woody. <laughs> by the way, we have no financial gain in this. Book. No, we, we don't make a penny from that. It is woody. Right? Yeah. You that can is, use those that is some hardwood. to focus your nose. This will allow you to start narrowing down so, what you smell. Vanilla, hay, buttery, citrus, yeah. decay. Oh, dude, what number is that? That's uh, seven. It smells smoky. This is. Decay smells like the dumpster behind a restaurant. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It yeah. totally is. So, one of the things that's worked well for me is if I'm trying to find those nuanced flavors, that complexity, uh, and I just it just keeps getting lost in the wall of stuff, um, I'll actually take a few sips of a neutral alcohol like vodka. A vodka, not a gin, because gin has herbs in it. Right, like a vodka. And then I come back to the whiskey, and all of a sudden I'm acclimated to the, to the alcohol, uh, and I can find a lot more notes that way. So, a few practical tips. I have next level challenge. No, crap! So I... <laughs> this is so impossible! No, there's not. Ah, right. it's so impossible. But I'm gonna try it anyway. No, it's fine. No matter how That's silly it looks. Okay. You will fail. Okay. I promise you, you will fail. Okay. I have selected five of these whiskeys. Okay. Half of them, and I've put them in here. Okay. So I'm you have going, them right there. I'm going to mix them all into one whiskey. All of them? And then you I'm gonna choose. pick the five? <laughs> Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Do you know which is which? Oh, they got the numbers. Okay. Got, now, so give me, I'll give you another yeah, glass. Give me a glass that doesn't have a number. So. Okay. <sighs> now, if you get it wrong, I get the glass full of whiskey. <laughs> okay. There's no way. This is. I'm literally just making shit up. Yeah. I'm just guessing, hoping I've got a chance. Yeah, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. And I know. You're. So <laughs> I so badly want to. You so badly want to get things right that you can't get right. I should, you know, this is more like poker. You play the player, not the cards. I should be just looking at what I thought you would pick out of these 10. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. Uh, laws. Yeah. Okay. 46. Because you wanted to do one for the people. No! no! Damn it! <laughs> All right. So that's the end of my choices, I, I think. I did Angels Envy, Laws Four Grain, George T. Stagg, Bell Mead Madeira Cask, and Jefferson's Ocean. Okay. So in equal proportions, it's actually a really good bourbon mm -hmm. that I'm now handing over. Yeah. It's my trophy. People always hassle you for smelling. Remember that. They're all the ways of smelling are right. Some are going to be more efficient if you only choose one. So you want to smell with your mouth open. You want to inhale 
through your mouth and nose at the same time to get the alcohol vapors to bypass your sinus cavity. You can move it around around your nose and you'll just get better airflow. You want to stay off the glass if the alcohol notes are too harsh for you. Mm -hmm. And you can get into them if the alcohol notes are not too harsh for you. So moving the distance. And then you want to pull it away and not just live in it because you want to give your brain a chance to process each time. There it is. Let your brain sit, think. Look for it again. Let your brain sit, think. Um, when it comes to tasting, I always take one normal sip and then I'll s gently spread it across my palate and swallow. And then the third time, I'll let it sit in my mouth for eight to 10 seconds and I'll move it around. I won't swish it, but I will move it around gently to coat the whole mouth and then I'll swallow it. And then my fourth one, I'll go back to a normal sip. And all of those, and then in between I'll be smelling, all those things will change the whiskey. Yeah, so tactically those are just some small little tips and tricks, but really yeah. the, the bulk of it is uh, try enough whiskeys to get a reference point. Yes, Frame take reference. notes, write things down. It's not raining for a brief window, let's run down to the distillery, show people. Do we take our giant goblets of whiskey with us? <laughs> but of course! Not gonna be here for too long. No. What progress do we have? So we've got exterior panels on this building, which means we've reached the point where all we need is a roof and we can put in electricity and then we can put in insulation. This so is what is this right here? This is the frame that goes around the window that will be between the production area and the tasting room. Fair enough. <laughs> this hasn't been cut out yet, but this is the door that goes that's ADA compliant and heads to the Welcome Center. Right. And the confessional window. So this right here, you said confessional window. Yeah. What is the what is so, the confessional window? This is going to be a little thing where you can sit and confess your whiskey sins. Yes. The, the <laughs> like, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I once poured uh, seven thousand dollars worth of whiskey in into Diet Coke. <laughs> that was a stunt whiskey, and you yeah. know it. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, quick update: It's raining. We're gonna hit. It that is again. raining. Yeah. All right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for friends. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.